30 years ago, 40 years ago. This country and um, we're in difficult times. This country will not move forward until Nigerians take ownership of their country. Politicians get into office and they think they own us. They think they have earned the right to tell you when to speak and when not to speak. They have earned the right to control your views and they cannot be criticized. The truth is, they don't have that right. People have said to me, your problem is you've criticized the government publicly. Many of them don't know that before I go with the public criticism, I would have spent months, maybe years, speaking in private. So when people talk about me and the whole missing money thing in the central bank, I tell them I never, I never made public the question of my suspicions of missing money. I wrote a confidential letter to the president as governor of central bank in August. I expressed my concerns and nothing happened the letter leaked after five months. It was not me who announced it. But once it was out, I had to stand by my letter and own my position. With the current administration, I spent literally the whole of 2015 and 2016 speaking to everybody who should be spoken to and telling them that the economic policies they were pursuing were going to destroy the Nigerian economy. It was only when that failed that I spoke publicly. And we had to speak. Now the question which everybody's asking is, should Amir speak? And the answer is yes. And it depends on what Amir you are and what you're speaking on. I mean, Socrates said, wise people speak because they have something to say. Stupid people speak because they have to say something. But if you have something to say, you have to say it. And I never agreed that anyone could tell me, given my background, that I was not qualified to speak on the economy. I was the chief risk officer of a bank. I was MD of a bank. I was governor of the central bank. In four of the five years that I was governor, I was best central bank governor in Africa. In one of the years, I was best central bank governor in the world. And I say, if we all go into public service and we have a record, we should be proud to point to that record. And I'm ready. Anybody can look at what was the rate of inflation and demi? What was the exchange rate? What did I do with the payment systems? What did I do with the banks? And if we spent all those years putting in our best to build this country, we have a right to speak when we see other people not doing the same thing. If every president, every governor, every minister, every commissioner took his job seriously, this country would not be where it was. But if people are willing to be ministers and commissioners and governors and presidents for eight years and not tell us how they have improved our lives, we have a problem. And we have to tell them that that is not why they were put in office. So. We do have challenges. My own position was no position would stop me from expressing my views. Amir, non Amir, Khalifa, non Khalifa, governor, non governor, it does not matter. 
we have to continue speaking up for this country and we have to continue asking politicians to do the right thing. And for the politicians, seven years ago, people thought they had eight years. Then they had four years. Now we're talking about how many months? Maybe, maybe some of them will soon realize that even the power they had and the position they had was temporary. In a few years, in a few months, in one year, many of those people will be out on the streets here. They will not... <laughs> they, they wouldn't have the office. They wouldn't have the power. And the only thing that is left is the record. What did you do when you were there? And if all you can point to is that you harass people and oppress people and, well, that's fine if that's what you want for yourself. But for most of us, we want something more important and more fundamental. So I'd like to thank um, Duke of Shomolu. And I don't want to embarrass my friends, but you see Herbert and Ike there? In every time I have difficulty, I pick up the phone and call them, and they're there. And knowing that you have friends like this in Lagos keeps us going. When things were getting really, really bad around the time that Sabu was probably crying, <laughs> I called Herbert and said, Herbert, I think the end is coming. This was going to happen. And he said, Your Highness, don't worry. You know, by the time announcement was made that I had been removed for insubordination, you know, that is the word, insubordination. And you will think that somebody who says you're subordinate to him is somebody who is superior to you. <laughs> you know, and like I said in Abuja, I have my record of service. My father has his record of service. My grandfather has a record of service. We cannot be intimidated by somebody because you're president or you're a governor and we cannot tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> We've chosen different paths. And I said yesterday, and I'll say it again, if I'd gone into politics, at least given the people that have succeeded in becoming president in Nigeria, I could have been president. <laughs> well, I could be governor. So, so that I choose not to go into politics does not make me a subordinate human being. And this is what we all have to learn as Nigerians. We take too much rubbish. And we're all too afraid, too much in our comfort zones. And by the time these guys finish with us, our children will not have a nation. And this is the real challenge that we face. How do we stand up? How do we retrieve our nation? How do we go back to that vision that we had? How do we give our children the opportunities that we have had? And even better. And this is the question that each of us must take with us. And the only way to do it is, if you're not in politics, you must hold those in politics to account. It's not a comfortable situation to be in, but believe me, I would rather, I wear, you know when people are not, when people are incompetent and they don't like you, you wear their dislike as a badge of honor. You can't, you can't be comfortable you can be normal in a dysfunctional environment. So we must get outside our comfort zone, and that is the only way we will change this country. And for the young people, do not fear. This is your country. This is your future. Take hold of it. Work for it. 
build it. Don't let anyone tell you to run away because you have a degree. Go to England, go to America, go to France. This is your country. You're coming back here. So let's work to build one for you. And you help us build this country for you.